Hey guys, David here from Google to 55 Tech Tutorials, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make an Active Directory domain controller in Windows Server 2012. Okay, so let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to make an Active Directory domain controller in Windows Server 2012. The server will allow you to authenticate users across a network using Active Directory domain services. This video will be split up into four parts. The first part will actually be promoting the server to an Active Directory domain controller. The second part will be configuring the DNS server. The third part, configuring the DHCP server. And the fourth part, I'll just be showing you how to actually connect to the server and authenticate users. So what I've got running here is a clean install of Windows Server 2012. I haven't done anything yet, so I'm going to be walking you through every single step that we need to do in order to promote this to Domain Controller. So here I am in Server Manager, and the first thing that I'm going to want to do is select Local Server in the side, and this just shows us all the properties of the current server. The very first thing that I always like to do is assign a static IP address to the server. It is essential that a server has a static IP address because when a computer connects to the server, it takes note of that server's IP address. If for whatever reason the server's IP address changes due to DHCP, it can cause issues across the network when other computers are trying to access the server. So this is why it's always best to have a static IP address on a server. Now by default here you can see that it is assigned an IP address over DHCP and we need to change that. So I'm just going to click this here and it'll open up the network adapters. I'm just going to right click my network adapter and the first thing that I'm going to do is just hit status. Once this is up I'm just going to hit details. This will just allow me to get some information that I need in order to assign the actual static IP address. What you need to take note of is your IPv4 default gateway. This is the IP address of your router, so in my case that is 192.168.1.1. Your IPv4 subnet mask, so 255.255.255.0 in my case. And you should also take note of the IP address that you were assigned. You can either assign this IP address to the server statically or change it. It's completely up to you. So once you've taken note of those three things, you can just close that, go to Properties, go to Internet Protocol version 4, and hit Properties. And this is where we're actually going to assign a static IP address. So you're going to want to click Use the following IP address, and you want to give the server a static IP address. So in my case, I'm just going to do 192.168.1, and the IP address that I was assigned via DHCP was .154. I'm going to use .175 because I find that's a bit easier to remember. However, if you're going to use an IP address other than the one that was assigned to you over DHCP, just make sure it's not already being used on the network. Again, the subnet mask, in my case 255.255.255.0, and finally the default gateway, so that's normally the IP address of your router, so in my case 192.168.1.1. Now it's going to ask us for a DNS server. Eventually we are going to be using this server as our own DNS server, however that isn't configured yet. So in this case, in order for us to just get access to the internet to download what we need, I'm going to use Google DNS just as a temporary solution. So you can type in 8.8.8.8 .8 and hit OK. So you can go ahead and hit close and I'll hit close again. And as long as it's not showing that your access is limited, you just configured the static IP address correctly. Now two things that we're going to want to do before we go any further is configure the time zone of the server and the computer name of the server. Both of these are essential to the server working properly. So to configure the time zone, I'm not in the Pacific time zone, so I'm just going to change that real quickly. I am in the Eastern time zone. Hit OK. And I'm going to change the computer name to something a bit more recognizable across the network. So in order to do that, you just want to hit computer name here, hit change, and I'll just call it Win Server. Changing the computer name just makes it a lot easier for other computers to recognize the server across the network. So I'll just hit OK. And it's going to prompt you to restart the computer, so just go ahead and do that. Okay, so my server has restarted and I am in Server Manager again. And you can see here that it has changed the computer name, and we are also on the right time zone, and we have our static IP address here. So with all that done, let's get to actually setting up the server itself. Now by default, Active Directory services, DHCP services, and DNS services aren't installed. So the first thing that we need to do is actually install those. In order to do that, what we're going to do is go to Manage, hit Add Roles and Features, click Next, leave this at default and just hit Next. We want to add these to this server here, so hit Next. And you're going to want to hit Active Directory Domain Services. It's going to give you a list of other things it needs to install as well, so we'll just hit Add Features. 
we're going to want to install DHCP server. Again, hit add features and DNS server. Hit add features. Click next. And it will also need to install a few more packages to get those running properly. So just leave this at its default and hit next. Hit next again. Hit next again. Hit next. And this window here is just going over what it's installing. So when you finally get here, you can just click install. Now this might take a little while to install depending on the speed of your computer. I'll come back when this is done. Okay, so that actually only took me about a minute or two. So once it's done installing everything, you can just hit close. And you will see in the sidebar here that we have new server roles. So let's go ahead and actually promote this server to an Active Directory domain controller. So just hit ADDS over here. And you should see this warning here saying that configuration is required for Active Directory domain services at Win Server. I'm just going to hit more. And it says that our server hasn't been deployed yet. So let's go ahead and just hit promote the server to a domain controller. This will open up the deployment configuration wizard. And you'll see here three options. You'll see add a domain controller to an existing domain, add a new domain to an existing forest, and add a new forest. We currently don't have an existing domain, so it only makes sense for us to click add a new forest. This basically allows us to configure a brand new domain, this server being the main server in this domain. In the root domain name box here, this is where you're going to put the name of your domain. You can make this anything that you like. I want my domain to be called Goguda, and in Windows Server 2012, you can't just leave it at this. You need to have some sort of prefix on the domain. So this can be .com, .org, .ca, but the most common one for small businesses tends to be .local. So that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to name mine Goguda.local. Your domain name is completely up to you. It can be anything that you like. Once you've decided on your name, you can just hit next. And at this screen here, it's going to ask you to select the functional level of the new forest and root domain. You can leave these at default of the Windows Server version that you are running. So in my case, Windows Server 2012 R2. The only time that you'd want to change this is if you were adding this server to an existing domain or plan to add other servers to this domain forest afterwards that are running an older version of Windows Server that might interfere with some functionality of the domain itself. For example, if you plan to add other Windows servers to the domain that are running Windows Server 2008, it might be a good idea to select the forest functional level and domain functional levels as Windows Server 2008, just so you don't run into compatibility issues. However, like I said, this is the only server on my domain, so I'm going to leave it at Windows Server 2012 R2. It's also going to ask you to create a directory services restore mode password, so you can go ahead and do that. Normally, I just leave this the same as my administrator password. Once you've done that, you can hit next. Again, this error here isn't important, so just hit next. And it should assign a NetBIOS domain name automatically here. This is just like a simple domain name. Just a simple name by which other computers can recognize this domain. So I'm just going to leave mine at Guguda. I'm going to hit next. And it's going to ask you to assign directories for all of the domain files. So you can just leave these at default. Hit next. This is a summary of what's going on. Again, you can read that and just hit next. And it's just going to make sure that everything that we need to promote the server to domain controller is installed. And once it's done that, you can just hit install. Now this part here might take a couple minutes and when it's done, it's going to prompt you to reboot the computer. So I'm going to do that and I'll come back when all of this is done. Okay, so my server has restarted and it took a couple minutes, but we're finally back at the server manager window. If we go over to the local server tab, you can see here that we're now part of the goguda.local domain. And there you go, the server is promoted to an Active Directory domain controller, and all of the domain services are running. So in theory, everything should work out now, and users should be able to authenticate using this server. Now the Active Directory Promotion Wizard actually did do a very basic configuration of the DNS server, so technically everything should be working properly. However, there are a few little tweaks that we can do to the server just to make things run a bit more smoothly. So in order to further configure the DNS server, all that you have to do is up here, go to Tools, hit DNS, and you can see here that this is the DNS Management Console. You can use this console to add other servers to the forward lookup zones and reverse lookup zones if you'd like to be able to point to certain computers with the host name instead of their IP address. So what it has gone ahead and done is it's already gone ahead and set up the host name winserver or the long name winserver.guguda.local to point to the IP address 192.168.1.175. This is all that's really needed in order for this server to work properly. I won't go into too much detail in terms of DNS servers here, but if you'd like to learn more about this, there is tons of documentation on the internet about how host names can be configured to point to certain IP addresses using this DNS manager console. The only thing that we're going to worry about right now is the DNS forwarder. 
servers. A DNS forwarder will allow clients to access other host names such as websites through this DNS server here without having to put them all into the forward lookup zones. Basically what I mean by this is if somebody tried to go to google.com and they had their DNS server set as this server here, since we don't have a forward lookup zone set for google.com to point to Google's IP address, it would not be able to process this request because it would not be able to tell the client which IP address google.com belongs to. What a DNS forwarder allows the server to do is it allows it to send any DNS requests that it cannot process itself to another DNS server. So for example, if that same client was trying to access google.com, but we don't have a forward lookup zone here for google.com pointing to the IP address, it would then send that request onto another DNS server, which should have that hostname IP address relationship and then that server would throw it back to the client computer so the client can access google.com. In order to configure our forward DNS servers, all that we have to do is select our own DNS server from the drop down menu here, go to action, click properties, and go over to the forwarders tab. Now you can see here that Google DNS is already actually in here because we set that when we set our static IP address. So Windows Server is very smart like that. Now if you wanna add more DNS servers, all you have to do is hit edit and you can add more here. So I'll add the alternate Google DNS server IP address as well, just in case 8.8.8.8 .8 is ever down. And that is 8.8.4.4. I'll hit enter and I'll hit okay. I'll hit apply, okay. And now this server is set up to send any DNS requests that it cannot process itself to Google DNS servers. Okay, now the very last thing that we need to set up is our DHCP IPv4 server. I'm assuming that you don't already have one set up on your network. However, if you already do have one running on your network and you would not like to use this server here as a DHCP server, what you can do is configure the DNS information of the DHCP server to point to our Windows server here. That's really all that needs to be done. Any computers that connect to the network via DHCP have to have this server here as their DNS server in order for the domain to work properly. So what you have to do is in your DHCP configuration settings, you need to change the DNS server that it gives out to the IP address of your server. So in my case, that would be 192.168.1.175. Now, if you don't have a DHCP server on your network already, this is where you can set one up. So in order to do that, just go to tools, hit DHCP. And I'm just going to make this window a little bit bigger here. You can see our server. Go to IPv4, and you can see that the DHCP server has not been configured. So in order to configure that, you need to go to Action, hit New Scope, and the New Scope wizard will come up. Just hit Next. You can name it whatever you want, so I'm just going to type in IPv4 DHCP server. I'll hit Next, and it's going to ask you for a range of IP addresses that the server will distribute. So I'm just going to do every address between 192.168.1.2 and 192.168.1.254. Now I'm not gonna go too in depth on what a subnet mask actually is. However, what I will say for this video is that we only are assigning IP addresses in the subnet 192.168.1. So this means that we'll need a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0, and it will also change the length automatically there. This should be the case for most basic configurations anyways. If you want to have a greater range of IP addresses that can be assigned, such as IP addresses ranging from the subnet 192.168.1 to 192.168.3, I'll leave an IP address calculator down in the description below, which you can use to figure out the subnet mask and the mask length. Once that's configured, just hit next. And it's going to ask you if there are any IP addresses that you want to exclude. You'll just want to exclude the IP address of the server, unless you have other addresses that you want to exclude as well. So. In my case, my server is 192.168.1.175. Just hit next. You can set the amount of time that the server leases the IP addresses for, so I'll just leave it at its default. I'll hit next. Again, hit next. And this is your gateway again, or the IP address of your router. So in my case, that was 192.168.1.1. I'll just hit next again. And it'll ask you for a domain name. And in this case, you can just leave it at your domain. It'll ask you for a server name. So I'll just do win server. And this is where it's going to ask you for the DNS servers on your network. So again, you can see that it already actually has our server in here. And if you have other DNS servers that you want to add, you can add those to the list as well. You can just hit next. If you want to utilize win servers, you can configure that here as well, but I'll just leave this blank and hit next. 
and it'll ask you if you want to go ahead and activate the server. So I'm just going to hit yes and hit finish. Now to actually enable the server, what you'll have to do is authorize it. So just click on your server up here. So in my case, winserver.kuguda.local, go to action and hit authorize. And you might need to refresh by going to action, refresh. But once the server is up and running, you should see a green check mark beside the server icon. And there you go. Your server is now also configured as a fully functional DHCP server. Okay, so let's actually go about connecting a client to the domain. Before we actually do that though, I just want to go ahead and create a new user inactive directory, just so I can give you guys an example of what it is like to log in. We already have the administrator user, but I want to create just a regular user, just so you guys get a better idea of what's going on here. So in order to create a new user, you have to go to Tools, Active Directory Users and Computers, and it'll open up the management window here. So I'm just going to select our domain here. I'm going to go to Users. I'm going to right click and I'm going to click new user and it'll go ahead and open up the new user wizard. So you can just type in the information. So I'll just use my name here and I'll make my username David. I'll hit next. It's going to ask you for a password. So I'll go ahead and type that in and you have a few options here you can select. I don't want to have to change the password at next logon and I'll select that it never expires. I'll hit next and I'll hit finish. And that'll go ahead and just create a new user. This user here is not an administrator, it's just in the regular users group. I'm not going to go too in depth on groups and policies in this video, I'll save that for a future tutorial. So right now we just have created a basic user with the username David. So let's go about actually connecting a client to the server. Okay, so here I am in a Windows 7 professional client, and this is the client that I'm going to be adding to the domain. Keep in mind that the steps are the exact same for Windows XP, Windows Vista, Windows 7, Windows 8, and Windows 10. The first thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to right-click on computer. That's my computer in Windows XP, and this PC in Windows 8 and Windows 10. And you're going to want to go to properties. Next, you'll want to go to advanced system settings, and go to the computer name tab. You'll want to hit change, and you'll want to click domain. Now in this box here, you want to type in the full domain name. So in my case, that was goguda.local. And you'll just want to hit OK. It's going to ask you for a username and password. So the username will be administrator. And the password will be the administrator password that you were using back on your server. Hit OK. And it might take a second, but it should automatically add the client to the domain. As you can see here, we got the message, welcome to the goguda.local domain. Hit OK, and it'll tell you that you need to restart your computer. So just hit close and hit restart now. Now, while the login screen is loading, I'll just let you know that if you had any problems connecting to the domain, it's most likely either a firewall issue or because your client's DNS settings are not pointing to the server. This is why it's important to configure the DHCP server on your network to point client's DNS servers to the Windows server. OK, so the computer has been rebooted, so I'll hit Control Alt Delete. And you should see down here that we are set to log on to the domain Guguda. If you don't see it, you just have to hit switch user, hit other, and it should automatically come up this way. So just for the purpose of this video, I'll log into the username David that we created back on the server. I'll hit enter. And there you go. We just authenticated ourselves using our Active Directory Windows server. So thanks for watching and I hope I helped. If you like this video, don't forget to click the like button down below. Don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe for more, and also don't forget to check out my Facebook and Twitter page. Also don't forget to check out my website at www.gugu55techtutorials.ca. All the links are in the description below.